Welcome back, guys. Rob of Rule of Two Review here, and today we dream about the Citadel. So as I had mentioned in my last video about my top five most wanted Smash Brothers characters, I uh, had mentioned that I have been replaying through Metroid Prime a little bit on the Metroid Prime trilogy for the Wii. Uh, also, mostly because I was just... Um, freaking out over how much I just love Metroid as a series and Metroid Prime as my all-time favorite game. Uh, and so, you know, inspired by that, I figured I'll get back to some more wonderful one-on-one footage with my next video because I don't want to stop showing some of that for a little bit. But uh, I was kind of excited to put some of the Metroid stuff up. Uh, it's always fun to see this game relive it. So here you go. You should be seeing some awesome Metroid Prime footage. So the first thing I wanted to talk about today um, comes from an article I read on VG Charts from a few days ago, and it's actually just a really tiny, quick, little, minuscule blurb about the next Mass Effect game. Uh, something that I was under the impression was probably going to be Mass Effect 4. However, um, the tweet that inspired this article from, if I can find his name, somebody from BioWare, um, Aaron Flynn is his name, uh, it's BioWare Montreal's general manager. And uh, he, his tweet really indicated that it isn't going to be Mass Effect 4. It's supposed to be, I guess, a side story, a side spinoff from the original trilogy of Mass Effect games. Uh, now, I knew, mostly because it was fair, fairly public information, that the next Mass Effect game wasn't going to feature Commander Shepard anymore. Um, or really, of course, any of the characters from the original trilogy. Which is certainly sad and unfortunate, because those characters are great and Commander Shepard was awesome. Um, but at the same time, I totally appreciate and respect the idea of trying to move forward and not be stuck just on those characters and, you know, confined to that one thread of story. So I appreciate, you know, branching out in a different area. Um, but at the same time, uh, now that we know that this game is coming and that it's supposed to be a side story, I, I'm still excited, but... I, mean, I guess I don't want to say that I'm not excited. It just it just feels a little bit different. But regardless, what's really neat is according to the tweet, which again was by Aaron Flynn, uh, the tweet said, great time playing the next Mass Effect game in Montreal. Ambitious, beautiful, fresh but recognizable, and fun. Uh, that's literally how he ends his tweet there. So what's interesting about this and the reason this article was written and what it pointed out is that it's basically making the statement that the game is in a playable state. And now, of course, we know when it comes to video game development, especially very large AAA, high profile, large scoped games like the Mass Effect games, a playable state is a several state process. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, versions of this game that could be available and playable for those working on it and creating it. So it might be in the most barely, barely, you know, beta alpha play, not beta alpha, just beta playable state for them, the developers. It could be in a state where even if they wanted to bring it to a trade show or a convention like E3 or PAX, they could have the public play it. Um, so, you know, because you can go in so many different directions in that, it's, it's not really a lot of finite information, but that doesn't really make it any less exciting because like I said, even though it's unfortunate to know that the next game won't probably be called Mass Effect Forward, it's a side story, quote unquote, it's still awesome. It's good to know that it's coming. Um, I am somebody who, uh, very sadly didn't finish Mass Effect 3 only because my PlayStation 3 broke only a few hours before I know that game was going to end. And that was, that was when the game was brand new. And I had to send my PlayStation in. I had to pay Sony a hundred bucks to fix it and send it back. It took about two weeks. Um, <clears throat> and so because of that, two things happened. One is I didn't get to finish Mass Effect on time. Two is that they had to completely wipe my hard drive, which means, <clears throat> excuse me, all my previous Mass Effect stuff, my Mass Effect character, you know, Shepard and my, and my um, decisions and everything I'd been making that was carrying over was gone. So I would have either started Mass Effect 3 all over again with no previous decisions made and just kind of started it from there to the end, or restart the entire series, which is not like I'm so opposed to doing that because they're great games, especially Mass Effect 2, which is all but perfect. Um, but it's it's still a daunting task, and there was other things to play, and I'd already played through most of Mass Effect 3, so I was really just upset and kind of bitter about that. Um, and it's really terrible because at the time that it happened, and I had to stop playing Mass Effect 3 and send my PlayStation away, it was just from what I remember, just several days, maybe a week, but probably not that long, just several days before the shitstorm really hit the internet about how much everybody hated that ending. And I was like, God damn it, I was like so close and I didn't even get to experience it. And I, to this day, I have avoided what the ending is really about. And that includes both the original ending and the uh, pseudo retrofitted ending that they, they released later to try to appease people. Um, so I've never experienced it. Uh, and I've never gone back to play it and I really, really do want to because I hate the fact that I haven't finished it. And one day I'll figure out what I want to do if I want to 
go through all those games or if I just want to say, you know, screw it and I'll just pick up Mass Effect 3 and just kind of, you know, rush through that one as fast as I can just to see the ending. Um, you know, and especially when you consider that, again, you know, leading to the same point, it's not Mass Effect 4 we're going to get and we're not playing as Commander Shepard or any of those characters. So your my decisions won't really matter at this point. At this point, it's just about the end game. So I'll probably just go through it. Uh, anyway, I didn't really want to just sit here and talk about Mass Effect 3. The point I'm getting at is... Um, there's apparently some information finally coming out about the next Mass Effect game. It's in a playable state, courtesy of the folks at BioWare who are developing it. So this is all really, really good news. Um, it's super exciting because I'm also a huge Dragon Age fan. I don't care what the haters say. I really liked Dragon Age 2 as well. So I'm super pumped for Dragon Age 3 by the end of this year. So we know that they're, you know, they're working double time, triple time even, because we know they're still continually working on the Old Republic. But they're mostly working, you know, double time. The next Mass Effect game, that series, and the next Dragon Age and that series. So it's it's really exciting to know we'll probably, you know, Dragon Age 3 should be out by the end of this year. Maybe if we're lucky, due to this news, this means Mass Effect, the next Mass Effect game, will be announced, showed, or playable at E3 or Gamescom or Tokyo Game Show or something this year. So that would be really, really fantastic news. Super excited to hear about more Mass Effect, no matter what it is. Alrighty guys, so something else I thought that it would be fun to talk about is this Batman announcement that we know we're supposed to be getting pretty soon. Uh, For anyone who's not familiar with this, um, a few days ago or maybe even last week, um, it was announced by Warner Brothers Entertainment that um, on New Year's Eve, December 31st, some form of Batman announcement is coming in the gaming space. Uh, It's not going to be a film or anything, I don't believe. Um, This was something that I first read about on IGN. It showed up on other sites as well. Um, But it was via the Facebook page, um, and it just said, where does it say it? Um, Visit this page on December 31st for a special announcement. More details to come next week. And it's very much referring to, you'd have to read the article, which I'll link below. It's very much referring to the, you know, the Batman games. Uh, There's not really any info known about this, so I just kind of wanted to riff about my thoughts really, really quickly. Um, Because it seems likely that this could be anything from, you know, a DLC announcement to... Uh, maybe a next-gen port of the older games to a brand new game, um, preferably for the next-gen systems. And all I want to say is that I really, really hope it's not DLC um, because I just don't really care about DLC. You know, And if anything, I don't think that DLC needs this kind of hype and this kind of announcement. You know, Not like this is massive, but they're playing it up enough and giving it enough mystery that they're trying to make it seem and feel like a very big deal and something you should be super excited about. DLC can be great. You know, I've enjoyed some of it. As a Call of Duty guy and a Halo guy, I like those DLC. I like the DLC content for those games. Um, I'm playing through Burial at Sea right now for Bioshock Infinite, as I said previously. And I will be playing through, I can't remember what it's called, or No One Left Behind, or whatever the uh, the DLC for The Last of Us is going to be. But in general, I don't really care. And it's just not that exciting. Um, and so I really am just hoping that this is not DLC for Arkham Origins. We know DLC will be coming, so I'm not saying that they shouldn't release it. That's fine. I just hope that they're not using this kind of ploy to try to get people excited about, oh, dropping another 15 bucks on another three hours of stuff that really doesn't matter because the game's already been released and completed. Don't care. That is not exciting. So what I would rather it be is just a brand new game. Um, I, I guess a next gen port similar to like uh, Tomb Raider and Wind Waker and stuff like that would be cool. Uh, that you know, I know that a lot of people really get excited about that stuff. Um, and I admit, you know, I love the Wind Waker HD port, so I certainly admit that sometimes it makes a lot of sense. But that game is very, very old, so that's bringing back a classic and making it new again, as opposed to bringing back last year's games basically and making them new again. So. Um, I mean, I guess that would be okay, but it wouldn't be the same as a brand new game. I mean, I, tell me what you guys think. How could you possibly not agree that a brand new Batman game, preferably in the Arkham series, but even if it's something different again, maybe it's time to reinvent it after Origins. You know, a new game for the next-gen systems would be really, really, really cool. Um, I think that they would look gorgeous, obviously, uh, and it would be really neat to see. They've done amazing jobs with the gamepad for the Wii U version of that ga- of uh, Arkham City so I'd lo- and Arkham Origins, so I'd love to see what they would do with another brand new one built from the ground up for the next-gen platforms. Um, and I think that the audience would be really, really excited about that, too. Um, DLC is such a weird thing. I've talked about it so many times amongst friends and on you know forums and, and comment threads and even a little bit on my videos here where it's there's certainly a market for it and there's there's a time and a place for what it makes a lot of sense and it, and it's actually adding to a game into the experience of a game um <clears throat> usually i guess really really story heavy stuff you know like BioShock and Last of Us to me it makes sense 
Um, and very, very multiplayer centric stuff where you're getting maps and things for something like uh, Call of Duty. I think that's great. But the other kind of different things, like some of the stuff for Fallout and other shooters in the past and stuff, even like Batman multiplayer content for the Uncharted games, like that's not really, it doesn't really deliver in the way that it does for those other few games that I mentioned, you know? And sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. I like the idea that games can come out and initially just right out of the gate in their $60 packaging, just be complete and good. Um, supplemental material and adding on to a great experience. Yes, there is a value in that. And I do like it when it happens and it's worth it, but I just don't think the DLC model, I don't know. I mean, it obviously makes a lot of money and a lot of people love it. So they're going to keep doing it, but it doesn't work for me personally. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, this is probably more than likely just going to be a DLC announcement. And if that gets you excited, then awesome. I'm really glad that you're going to get it. And I hope that the DLC is good. Um, but if it's a brand new Batman game, preferably one exclusive to the next gen. I just want a PS4, Xbox, Wii U one. Don't even bog it down with the last gen one. Not like I don't love those systems, but at this point commit to one or the other. I don't want a whole bunch of back and forth ports like Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell and stuff like that. Call of Duty. At this point, let's say, let's have the developer start diving into the next gen now that every Everything is out and available. Um, so hopefully it's another Batman game. Brand new, next gen, gorgeous, super fantastic Batman game. Um, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, the Facebook page for Rule of Two Review is up, like I said previously. There's a link below in the description. Um, so please go and like the Facebook page. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the video, share the video. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys next time.